Hi there, welcome to Newbie Prepping. I'm Rich, and in this video we're going to go over how I can fix what went wrong in my Solo Overnighter. It'll also be a good video to follow along to if you haven't ever done a hammock and tarp camp before. If you want to see the Solo Overnighter video that I did, click in the top right hand corner of the screen now on the grey eye icon. You don't have to if all you want to do is uh, learn about the hammock and tarp camp, but if you want to see exactly where I went wrong, then feel free to click that video in the top right or in the description below. Alrighty, well let's go. For the benefit of the people just watching to learn about a hammock and tarp camp, uh, what you want to do first is buy a tarp that is longer than your hammock. Uh, just make sure that it's longer than the hammock, not the straps that are holding on to the hammock of course, just the hammock itself. It's very important for water flow prevention, something that we'll go over a bit later on. I'd also recommend buying a spool of cordage because whatever cordage comes with your tarp likely won't be long enough to create the ridge line that you want to make in between two trees. And the good thing is once you've measured up your ridge line you can keep it forever and it's a good indication of uh, uh, what length you want to go for in between two trees. So it's a nice and easy way to determine uh, just which trees you want to use. Bringing a spool of cordage also means that you can cut off extra bits that you will need for later on, which is something we'll go over as well. So the first and probably worst mistake that I made was hanging up my tarp in a very haphazard and very lazy fashion. I would definitely recommend stringing up your tarp with the ridgeline method because it j guarantees to keep it more taut. The way I had it before, uh, the rain that poured down onto it, it just allowed it to uh, just drop down and sag a little too much. It just wasn't taut enough for the job. And what actually happened was the tarp drooped so much that it actually started touching up against my hammock. And uh, because of the way that I had uh, the uh, the drawstrings uh, tying the tarp to the tree, um, water seeps down to the inside of the tarp. That's something that I didn't actually realize was happening at first. I thought that my tarp just wasn't waterproof, but uh, that's a very likely culprit of why it got wet on the inside. So of course, the tarp got wet on the inside, started touching uh, my hammock, and then the hammock just absorbed a bunch of water. So that's why we want to go over how to prevent that sort of thing. And we're going to go over uh, how to put a ridge line up. Uh, this is um, my personal uh, preferred method. Uh, there are plenty of videos out there showing you what knots uh, you could use, but I think that this is the easiest way, and uh, it's definitely good if you're just starting out. Okay, so this is how you put the ridge line on the first tree. Obviously, you want to try and get it above your head height, but uh, for the sake of this demonstration, I'm just going to do it quite low here. Okay, so just go around the tree. Uh, so this part will be our ridge line, and then we just bring this part under, and then through here. And you want to make sure you have enough of it there, and then you just tie that off there. Like, not tie it off, sorry, you pull the ridge line there. And then you make a loop here, and then you go over the ridge line, and then under through. So, here we are through here and then just pull on the ridge line and then push that towards the tree okay and then so you can push the knot towards the tree while pulling the ridge line and that will stay nice and tight and also at the end it makes for a nice easy pack down because you can just pull that down and then it comes off nice and easily okay did you get that let's try that again around the tree underneath, over and inside. That's the first part done. Hold that there with my thumb. Make a, a little loop here. Come underneath the ridge line and inside this little uh, bit here. And then pull that, pull that off there. And then just push the knot towards the tree. And there you go, nice and tight. And of course, once again, nice easy undo there. Okay. Fantastic, that's the first one done. Okay, same principle as last time. I'm just gonna demonstrate the uh, uh, tying up of the second tree uh, just down below, but obviously we'd be putting it above our head normally, uh, just so that the tarp is nice and high so that we're not crawling down under it all the time and just having a miserable experience. Okay, well, let's go. Okay, so around the tree. Pull it nice and taut and then once it's taut, we get the ridge line part and we pinch off and we make a loop here. 
and we tie the loop a simple knot in there just so that we get a loop in the uh, ridge line we tie the uh, extra portion around here just a bit lower and then what we do is we just loop off this bit here and now this is where you need a little something else uh, you need something to act as a toggle now uh, some people could uh, would say that you could use a stick however if uh, sticks are quite wet then they will break easily so what I'm going to use is something from my GoPro pack this thing right here so this is our toggle and uh, uh, this is the basic setup here so uh, this loop from the extra bit is inside the loop that's on the ridge line and now we're just going to pull this bit and we're just going to pull the ridge line too just like this nice and tight so that the ridge line is nice and taut and then we're going to just tie this around the toggle just to make sure it doesn't come off and it stays in place and there we go nice taut ridge line uh, obviously uh, I've got the other one on the other tree high up uh, so uh, if they were totally uh, completely perpendicular to each other uh, then it wouldn't be quite so wobbly it would be a lot more taut but that's basically how you do it there so let's do that again so you tie uh, put, so we put your ridge line around the tree you pinch off a bit here and then you make uh, the loop and then you loop off uh, the bit of the extra uh, cordage and you put this loop inside of the ridge line loop and then you get your toggle and then tighten off the ridge line by pulling this to and then tie the excess ridge line uh, so the excess cordage around the toggle just to make sure it stays on and then that is well enough to put a tarp on okay so as you can see the tarp is up now and um, what you can probably tell is that the ridge line is like going over the top of the tarp there uh, see it's important to do that because if the ridge line goes underneath the tarp uh, which you would think would be better because it would hold it up a li little bit better it's actually not because uh, if it rains uh, which is the thing that we're uh, very worried about when we're hammock camping um, the water can go down the tree and then down the ridge line and then uh, underneath into the tarp now that's something that you don't want it's kind of related to what I got wrong uh, with uh, my tarp setup in my solo overnighter uh, because the water managed to get inside the tarp, uh, so we don't want that happening. So here's a clip of me uh, putting the um, cordage through the loop uh, so that it goes over the top. And for this sort of tarp uh, that I have here, uh, that would be the best way to do it, uh, just to prevent um, water flow as much as possible. <coughs> uh, but um, how it's staying up like this is, uh, you'll see in this clip here, uh, what I do is I get, uh, I cut off a piece of cordage, uh, two pieces of cordage, uh, quite long, but not too long. And then what I do is I put them onto the ridge, ridge line by looping them over on themselves twice and then pulling it through. The good thing is about these lines is that once they're tied up like this, um, they're not easily pulled left and right, but as long as you hold onto the knot itself, you can move it up the ridge line, which means that it's easy to reposition your tarp once you're getting your hammock up and that is important because you want the tarp to be over the hammock as much as possible and then I tie them through each eyelet that the ridge line is already going through um, and then I do a double knot there so yeah uh, that's what I did with the uh, the two uh, eyelets that's how it's as taut as it is uh, the thing is that uh, it will never be uh, as taut as possible uh, with the ridge line going over the top, uh, which is why you want to get a tarp 
that has um, loops sewn on to the, uh, the, the spine of the uh, tarp itself. So then you can put the cordage through those loops and that will help keep the tarp up and not droop whatsoever. I would recommend if you're in the UK, DD Hammocks. They do a selection of really good tarps and uh, I've even bought one as well, the 3x3. Uh, three by three meters and uh, that is nine foot and I am six foot four so it covers me perfectly and uh, they have the uh, loops going along the spine uh, which means keeping it up will be nice and easy even in bad weather. Okay so this is how to put up uh, hammock straps, uh, the more tree hugging sort of strap. Um, all you do is you get the one side that has the loop. You'll notice that the other side of the strap has three or more loops on it. Uh, wrap around the tree and then thread the strap through the one loop. And then if it's a thin tree, wrap it around again and then thread it through the loop again. Um, this will provide a stable uh, support for your hammock. Uh, there is also the webbing variety that you will see on some uh, hammocks as well. Uh, all you would do with those is uh, sling them both around the tree and then tie a knot at the front of the tree. It's a lot more simple than this. Not that this isn't simple. Okay, so this particular hammock has carabiners. Uh, what we're going to do is have the straps like this and then strap this to one of the three holes on here. Oh, there's actually four holes. Hey, how about that? So here we go, we we'll strap that on and then we'll put that on the small side there. Okay, let's do the other side. Okay, so obviously our hammock is too low, so we need to wrap these straps around the tree again. Okay, so what we did was we just tied that around again, and look at that. Our hammock is set up nicely. It is nowhere near the uh, sides of the tarp at all, which is exactly what we want because in case any water does get on the inside of that tarp, we don't want it touching the hammock at all. Because then, like I said earlier, the water will touch the hammock and then the hammock will absorb that water and then you'll end up getting wet. That's not what you want. We also want to make sure that these tension lines, which is what I like to call them, are completely covering the ends of the hammock because then that will block more water from getting onto these straps. You see we've got a slight issue here. We've got extra room on this side so we'll just slide this down a little bit. As you can see that still completely covers that carabiner and so now on this side we can slide this up. If you find it difficult sliding that up just hold onto the tarp and pull the tarp while you're pulling this thing. That's nice and covered over there, but there's more that we can do for water flow prevention. Let's take a look at drip lines. These types of hammock straps have carabiners on them, so they help prevent water flow very well. And even having them, uh, the excess strap flow down like this is a good way uh, to stop water from getting down. But I still like to have extra drip lines on here just as contingency plans we're just going to put them on the same way that we put these tension lines on up here. So we've put a loop like that, and we bring that over, and then we bring the legs of the cordage through that, and simply just tighten it like that. And that will make any water flow that even makes it onto here stop there and go down here. And I'm going to put one on the other side as well. There we go, that one's on there now. I've been burned too many times before getting wet while in my hammock, so I just want to make absolutely sure I've got contingency measures just in case the water gets past here. In order to prevent the water flow up here, you could put another drip line underneath here and then string it all the way down and maybe put it through the bottom eyelet here. But honestly, the water would probably get to about here and then drop off anyway. Um, and even if the water does get beyond here, and it, uh, I, re I would honestly think only a little bit of water would get underneath your tarp. And besides, even if uh, 
uh, the underside of the top does get wet. It's far enough away from the hammock as we made sure of before. But if you are very concerned about the weather, then putting a drip line, a really long drip line going all the way down and tying it off at this islet at the, at the bottom here, that is an option, should you want to. One important thing to say is to definitely have the drip lines underneath the tarp because obviously if they're out up here then any rain that falls beyond the uh, drip line will still go down. So make sure the drip lines are here uh, underneath the tarp, okay, to make sure that the rain doesn't come in. You might think that I'm overstressing the uh, uh, rain prevention uh, a bit too much with hammock camping, but um, honestly, uh, especially for prepping, um, if you want to make sure that you're prepared for the absolute worst weather because I've been out hammock camping before where uh, there wasn't any rain forecast and yet it poured down and that was the first time I hammock camped and uh, I got absolutely soaking wet and it really did uh, kind of put me off a little bit. Uh, so it took me a while to get back into the idea of hammock camping. But honestly, uh, if you follow all of these steps to make sure that you don't get rained on, and uh, you make sure that you put everything up uh, properly the first time and do it right the first time, then you won't get wet and you won't get put off because hammock camping, hammock and tarp camping, really is a wonderful experience. I would rate it over tenting any day of the week. Okay, so that's all the tips that I wanted to get across about hammock and tarp camping, about water flow prevention. Um, but I like to be thorough. See, what I would do is when I'm in my hammock, uh, in my sleeping bag, what I would do is put a waterproof bivy over my sleeping bag, just as one last line of defense. Even if all of these other methods don't work and your hammock still gets wet, at least then your sleeping bag won't get soaking wet. Um, you might be cold, but at least you won't be wet. Uh, you'll essentially just be um, lying in a cocoon of moisture and wetness, but you yourself won't be wet. So that's what I do. That's what I'm going to do from now on. Uh, and I wish I did it on the solo overnighter as well, but there we go. Um, uh, so yeah, uh, waterproof bivy bag. And also another bonus tip uh, for all of your gear. Um, I came up with another idea, uh, getting one of those large uh, waterproof sacks uh, that um, people would normally put laundry in um, and uh, just bring it along with you. And when it comes to sleeping in your hammock at night, just put everything into that waterproof sack and then just tie it off just to make absolutely sure that it's completely out of the elements and not going to get wet at all. Um, these waterproof sacks, obviously, they fold down to nothing. So it's and they're gonna, they weigh nothing either. So they're not going to take up any space in your bag whatsoever. So I think that that is a pretty good bonus tip as well. Alrighty. Well, thank you very much for watching this video. Um, I think that I hopefully uh, redeemed myself from all the mistakes that I made in that previous overnighter, but that was my first solo overnighter, and there was a lot of torrential rain. <laughs> uh, alrighty, well, um, thank you very much for watching. Uh, please uh, like and favourite the video, um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and click that bell. Uh, we got a Discord as well if you want to come and join us and chat to us. And uh, we've also even got merch. Not just newbie prepping merch, but also merch for uh, people who like bushcraft and people who like wild camping. Uh, you don't have to just get something with our logo on it. But we'd appreciate it if you do. Anyway, thank you very much. We will see you again on newbie prepping. Goodbye.